Um, obviously, really happy for our team. I thought, uh, you know, we, we played a complete game, four quarters. It was far from perfect, and there's a lot of cleaning up. Uh, but anytime you're plus two winning the ball, you got a great chance to win. And I thought our guys played hard. They played physical. And that's exactly what we've been talking about all, all season. It's just more or less our style of play. Um, certainly, again, a lot to clean up. Um, we've got to be a little bit more disciplined. Um, there's things we have to do as coaches that got to be a lot better. Um, but it's a good start. And again, it's only one game. And we'll enjoy it for 24 hours. Um, and then we'll be on to Atlanta. Matt, could you talk about the sequence where Jordan missed Musgrave, then came back and hit Reed? Um, it was either on the ensuing play or the playoff. Just how important it is to see a guy bounce back in, in his growth as a quarterback. Well, that that's this game, right? You have to be resilient. And you can't allow one play to affect the next play. And we always talk about having a one-play mindset. And I think he's he's a resilient guy. I was really proud of his effort, his, just his composure, his competitiveness. Although I don't want him uh, taking a lot of shots when he's running the football. Um, you know, the, the one scramble allowed us to go for it on fourth down. And I got to give it up for, to, to Darnell Savage in that situation because he's the one that kind of said, we got you, coach. And um, that, that I guess, made me a little bit more decisive in that situation to go for it. And obviously, it was a big play to Aaron Jones on that, on that critical fourth down. And um, yeah, just a, big, just a big moment in the game. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about him for, for months. How do you think he handled you know, all the talk over the last couple of months, the pressure today, you know, the, whole, the whole package? Uh, I, I thought he, it's, you're never going to play perfect. Um, I'm sure there are some things that, you know, that we got to clean up. Um, most notably, you know, we're in a situation, um, in a, that two minute situation, obviously can't take a sack right there. And then I got to be better with, with getting a play call to him so we don't have to take that time out and, and kick that field goal. Um, it was a long field goal. Thank God Carlson made it. Um, so it kind of covers up that mistake a little bit, but that's something we need to get corrected. But I thought all in all, I couldn't be more proud for, of, of just his performance, his poise. There's a, there's a big time belief in that locker room for Jordan Love. And I think uh, the guys, they're going to rally around him. They're excited for him. They, they love him. They respect him. He comes to work every day. Great attitude, great energy. Um, and I, I think you saw that today. I know you got to manage Jones's touches for the long haul. I think he had five on the first series, none for the rest of the half. Is that is that okay with you, or what you think of that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously we got into some situations where um, it was some get back on track situations. We had way too many of them. I want to say we had four of them in the in the. Um, after that first drive. And I think we had, what, 23 plays at the half. So not a lot of plays. It was hard to get into a rhythm. It's never an excuse, but it's just it's just the facts. And um, you could look and be nitpicky and, and try to get them the ball in certain ways. And certainly we got to do that because you can see the explosiveness that he possesses and what he does when he has the football. Um, and then, you know, uh, Hopefully it was just a cramp there at the end, but we'll we'll see and we'll take a look at that. Um, but I thought, yeah, he is he's a dynamic playmaker. There's no doubt about it. It is a long season, and we know that we got to manage him as best we can because he is one of the guys that that just tilts the field in your favor when he's out there, whether he's getting the ball or not. When you look at some of the young guys that helped Jordan have success, Romeo had the hamstring all week because there's too many touchdowns. Lucas got the sack early. You talk about the rest of the cast of characters, the young guys who stepped up. Today. Yeah, I was I was really proud of our young guys. I mean, that we had. Uh, I'm not quite sure how many rookies we had out there today, but there were a lot of them, and uh, I thought, you know, for the most part, it was it was pretty clean. There's again a lot of a lot of things to clean up, but. Every time they go out there, it's it's a great learning experience for them, and the the expectation is that they're going to learn from it, both good and bad, and continue to get better and better and better and grow along the way. And you know, um, we just got to make sure that we we continue to push them 
And they got all those guys, I can say collectively, uh, that rookie class has got just, they love ball. And it makes it fun to work with guys like that that are going to push themselves and they're going to push each other to be better. Now, what was your thinking putting together the game plan? Did you have a pretty good idea on Tuesday? You wouldn't have Christian, and if you were going to have Romeo, it was going to be limited because you've got Malik Heath and Wicks out there. I mean, what was your thought process as you put your game plan together? Well, you're, you're, you're trying to attack coverage and, and um, attack whatever looks that you think may be presented to you. Um, but also, we, we knew that the idea, at least going in, was try to lean on the run a little bit and try to get some big explosive plays in the pass game off the run actions. And I think, uh, you know, it was hard to get into a rhythm, especially in that first half. Like I said, just too many get back on track situations. And then we had um, a lot of, you know, the run pass cans where if they give us one look, we're going to try one play. And you got to give them a lot of credit because they disguised pretty well. Um, I thought the safeties did a really good job of, of showing one thing and bailing and, and vice versa, holding the shell and coming down on the snap of the ball where, you know, um, but that's football. And, um, you know, you got to give them credit. When things don't go the way you want them to, you always come in here and you say it starts with me. Do you and your offensive staff at least take a little bit of pride in the fact that you managed to scheme two plays where Luke Musgrave, there's no one even within the TV picture of him. You get those throws that Jordan had to Jaden, I mean, he's those are really well-designed plays. Do you get to at least feel good about how you set up your quarterback to be in a good position today? Yeah, uh, the, the second one to Musgrave uh, certainly isn't how you, you draw it up. I've never seen that happen before where we fumbled a snap and um, was trying to do it off our keeper action. Um, Got to give Ben Sermons a ton of credit there. He's, he's the one that suggested the play. Um, you know, after he said, hey, when we get a first down right here, what about, we call that play a leak. He's like, what about the leak? And I was like, oh, yeah, Ben, I love it. So give him a lot of credit on that one to, to uh, put that in my brain. And, you know, it's not always how you draw it up. But thankfully, I was giving Musgrave some crap in there. I was like, man, I've never seen a guy so, so wide open not score, or catch the ball and score right there. But, um, you know, you got a cramp on the play. So uh, thankfully, Jordan and Rome came through on the next play. Rome made a hell of a catch on that on that play on the fade. Um, that was big time. It didn't seem like they uh, they blitzed all that much. Well, what do you make of that? What do you also make of the way that Love took care of the ball? No, no turnovers. Yeah, I think that's big time. I think that that's quarterback's number one responsibility. We talk about all, about it all the time. Is is you got to take care of the football, and I thought he did that. And anytime you got a quarterback that takes care of the football, you got a chance to win games. And uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I'm really happy about his just overall performance, his even keelness throughout the the course of the entire game. He was just he was composed the whole game, and I know he's pissed at me at the end of that in that two minute, uh, not getting that play in. But I don't. I told him at halftime, hey, I don't blame you. That was that was on me. So we've seen him even keel in all our interactions with him, but I have to imagine the emotions from what we heard through this concrete wall. We're pretty high afterwards for everyone. What was he like after his first game? Oh, he was awesome. And, you know, I think he's got great perspective because he's been in this league for a few years and he knows that it's only one game and it's a start. And you're only as good as your last game in this league. And so you've got to build upon it. Um, it, does, it, it means nothing if, if we don't prepare the right way and get ready to play a tough Atlanta team that's coming off a game where I want to say they won by two touchdowns. So we got to go into their their place next week. Um, you know, having coached there before, I, I remember that that atmosphere is is being pretty electric when, when at least when we were there, and um, it's going to be a, a a tough task. Two more, please. You've talked a lot about um, defensive philosophy with you and Joe and the players. Um, obviously, Joe was on DJ Moore for all the game or most of the game today. Is that kind of way it's going to be going forward? Or how do you think that worked out for you today? Oh, I thought it worked out well. I thought Ja, you know, he's a guy that he wants those challenges. DJ Moore is an elite receiver in this league. He's a guy I got a ton of respect for. Um, you know, just he, he dynamic playmaker, and he's dangerous when he gets the ball in his hands. And, but Ja is an elite corner. He's one of the best in the game.
and he's got a lot of confidence, and we got a lot of confidence in him. And but that could change on a weekly basis because I feel like we got other guys. I, I got a lot of confidence in Rasul Douglas as well, and same with CV. So um, that will all be dictated by whatever game plan we have. Matt, just how much does Jones mean to this offense? I mean, we're all going to focus on Jordan, and rightfully so. But I'm not sure if that 51-yard catch and run, if that's exactly how that's drawn up, where with the naked and throwing back, that was made it look really easy there too. Is that just how important is he to what you guys? Yeah. So we had we had the the screen that went for I want to say that was the 51-yarder, and then the, the choice route on the fourth down um, ran a great route and. Ran through the ball. Jordan threw a perfect ball, and um, yeah, he's he's like I said earlier. He's a guy that tilts the field in your favor. He's so dynamic, so explosive, and take all the the uh, his ability as a football player out of it. He means so much to that locker room by his actions, by what he says, and what he does on a daily basis. He's a he's a real leader in that locker room. He's a real leader for a football team. He inspires everybody. And he comes to work each and every day with a great attitude. Uh, I can't say enough great things about him. I've said it a million times about the kind of person he is. You cannot have enough Aaron Jones on your football team.